what's going on guys so it is an absolutely windy day today we have upwards of 35 mile an hour winds you can see the trees everything blowing around and this is going to be a great opportunity to take out the new palomino pause off-road overland travel trailer this thing is super cool i've made a lot of videos on it actually i think i was one of the first youtubers to make a video on this unit at the elkhart dealer open house last year so uh, i've been in envy of this rv ever since they produced it ever since i saw what went into it and all the different cool aspects of it and it's really cool that my friends over at roa off-road um, both in salt lake city as well as south carolina um, offered this to me for two months to evaluate and just to really see what it's all about and honestly one of the things i really want to see is how this thing tows and right now we have it hitched up to the 2023 gmc sierra denali 1500 this is a half ton pickup truck this has the three liter lzo duramax diesel in it the baby duramax and uh yeah we have it hitched up and it's transferring roughly i think we we estimated it to be about 950 pounds of tongue weight based on the celaton scale that we use to weigh the actual front so if you haven't seen that video definitely go check it out um, we have the airbags pretty much dumped right now they're at their lowest position and you can see the truck is is sagging a little bit right now uh, typically it probably sits about an inch and a half taller in the back than it currently sits so it's sagging about an inch and a half and uh, yeah just pulling it up to where it's at now from the back definitely definitely let this truck know that there was some weight behind it but it's gonna be interesting today because of the wind and the winds gonna really really let us know how this tows and this is a good setup to see how this is going to tow through this wind. Now, I know a lot of people want to know the weight and the numbers on this unit, which I've gone over several times. But for the sake of this video, let's look at it one more time. So the gross vehicle weight rating of this unit is 9,459 pounds. But as it sits, it's pretty much dry. So the dry weight of this unit is roughly 7,546 pounds. Let's add 100 pounds to that in terms of propane. So we're probably at about 7,650 pounds um, sitting on the back of this truck. And again, about 950 pounds worth of tongue weight currently resting on the back of this truck. So if you've followed my channel for a while and you've actually seen what this truck's capable of, the maximum tow weight capacity of this truck is 8,800 pounds. It has a 1,450 pound total cargo capacity with 880 pounds on the sticker designed specifically for conventional towing. Now, does that mean that that's all the weight you can put on the back no that's not the reason why they put that number there is because they're trying to calculate a typical family of four people sitting in the truck using some more of that 1450 pounds worth of total cargo capacity so we're actually under what this truck's capable of handling from a payload perspective well under it because it's only me and my father in the truck right now um, and from a total towing capacity we're well over a thousand pounds under what the truck's maximum towing capacity is this is not the maximum tow package version of this truck. Um, they make a, another version higher, but you can't get it in this Denali trim with the magnetic ride suspension, which this truck has. So from a towing perspective, this truck does have the trailering package. I have the trailer brake controller up front. Um, it's already wired for the seven-way connector and we are all connected to it. I even have the ability to connect auxiliary cameras so I can see inside of the trailer or off the back of the trailer or another view, in other words. It doesn't have to be the inside. We don't have that connected right now because we don't have that camera system. But we're gonna hit the road. Um, we're gonna see how this truck tows this trailer. Um, I can already tell you it doesn't tow it the same way my red truck would and that's just based off of how I feel just going over some bumps on the driveway but we're gonna hit the road again big shout out to the folks at ROA off-road RVs of America again they showed this to me in Salt Lake City at their uh, location there even though they don't sell them there they sell them at their South Carolina location I had a great opportunity to tour this one and another floor plan and these things are absolutely amazing anyways let's go ahead and hit the road yeah I can feel a little bit of the yeah. tail wagging the dog Okay, so we've been on the road here for a little while now, and I'm trying to find the right roadway to do this. We decided not to go out to the, the beach as we started to approach the bridge because, honestly, this, uh, this setup right now with this truck, the truck just doesn't feel like it has the weight and the stability to handle the weight of this trailer. Um, it's moving quite a bit as we got up to highway speed, so we decided to turn around and do a little bit of driving on a little bit more of a controlled environment. Um, I got my dad here with me. 
could you could you tell that we were towing something heavy oh definitely you can feel it back there it's the back end of the truck is felt like it was getting a little bit light even yeah yep it was definitely starting to kind of wag uh the the trailer was definitely wagging the dog if that makes sense um, it's a very interesting feel, especially because we have some pretty high winds today. What would you guesstimate the winds are at? In the mid-30s, possibly? Mid-30s, 40, something like that. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a windy day. Right now, things are going okay. Um, I've pretty much had my hand on the trailer brake uh, actuating lever just in case things got a little squirrely, and they started to for a second. So keep in mind, I am not over any of this truck's numbers in terms of towing or payload capacity. The truck's overall payload capacity being 1,450 pounds, even though we have about 950 pounds worth of tongue weight resting on the back of this truck and the sticker on the door says 880 pounds, again, that sticker on the door is calculating that weight if you have people in the vehicle as well. It's trying to average it out so it's not saying that you can use all of your payload capacity over the back of the truck or you know none of it. It wants to give you a fair number to say, okay, with people and supplies in the truck, how much does that leave you in terms of conventional towing capacity? Um, yeah, this, this truck, in my opinion, is too light for this trailer would you agree dad yeah i don't i don't think i'd want to take it out in any higher wind than this yeah and, and even then you know i'd probably say shoot how fast do you think we got going maybe 55 miles an hour before it really started to feel a little sketchy back there yeah, not very fast probably 45 50. yep and if you see the uh the american flag up ahead you'll see that we have a very very strong crosswind so the wind right now is hitting the trailer from the side if this were a headwind we probably wouldn't be impacted as much we wouldn't feel it as much uh, because that hinging effect that takes place between the truck and the trailer wouldn't be as pronounced but because the winds hitting us from the side as you can see by that flag right there things are definitely a little bit sketchier in terms of towing we're gonna get back on the highway here um, and again, my hand's hovering right above the trailer brake controller, and I'm applying gain as we need it to counteract the trailer's swaying motion. And that's really the thing you want to do. You want to make sure that if you're going to be towing near your truck's capacity, which we are certainly near this truck's capacity, that you have your trailer brakes dialed in. And that's the first thing we did. We probably should have gone over that before we left, but we spent, you know, the first three or four hundred yards of travel just dialing in the trailer brakes, wanting to make sure that the trailer brakes are controlling the way they're supposed to as you apply the brake and as you apply the manual control lever. Right now things are okay and I can start to see the trailer and that's where we're feeling it too. Did you start to feel that? Yeah. I'm watching the trailer in the mirror and you can see it wagging. Yep. You can start to see a wagon. It starts to happen at about 55 60 miles an hour. I don't know if it's so much because of the wind or the wind and the speed combined. I think we're kind of creating our own little uh, path through the wind that starts to cause the trailer to sway back and forth. We're not getting any sway really right now. We're going 57 miles an hour. But as we go faster, yep, there it starts to go a little bit. I think it's reacting to the gusts. Yeah, you know, you're probably right. So the safe travel speed right now, well, shoot, yeah, there's a gust because it's starting to wag again. Roughly about 55 miles an hour is probably the fastest I would want to go towing this, which is kind of crazy because when we travel, you see people going much faster with their trailer still swaying. And the, the reality here is, is I don't want to hit the brakes on the truck to control the trailer. If they're dialed in properly, yes, the trailer's going to help. But what I want to do is I want to maintain my speed and I want to apply trailer brake gain manually to basically create tension between the truck and the trailer. So they're trying to pull apart from each other. Basically, the truck is pulling on the trailer while the trailer is trying to slow down. And because it's slowing down from the tires on the trailer, it's straightening everything out. And that's the way you react whenever you start experiencing sway. The last thing you want to do is try to simply apply your brakes or try to slow down or try to counter steer it. The best thing to do, again, is just to apply your your throttle a little bit, maintain speed, and then apply your trailer brakes slowly. And we got a big truck coming up next to us, which is definitely causing some sway. There we go. And again, what I'm doing is I'm just keeping the speed and I'm applying trailer brakes. 
this is sketchy. This is like kind of white knuckling it for me, honestly, because I don't like to tow in this type of conditions. But the point here is that I am towing under what this truck is capable of towing. I am under the numbers. And a lot of folks think that, you know, you can tow at or even above what your truck's numbers are really capable of. And this demonstration is just to show you that even though you may be well under overall numbers, you know, from a capacity perspective, you very well could have a very rough towing experience. Now, I don't have any weight distribution and I don't have sway control set up on this truck. Whoa, yeah, we're getting some sway here now. Just controlling it with the manual lever, but we got quite a bit right there. So, your opinion, Dad, would you tow this trailer with a half-ton truck? Not out on the interstate, no. Yeah, I'm actually just applying trailer brake and hitting the throttle to force the truck and the trailer to have tension between them right now. So I'm pretty much riding the trailer brake at a very low level. I'm only applying very low gain. It feels sketchy. From the passenger seat, how does it feel? I can feel it that it's, it's, it's not a real confidence building experience. Let's put it that way. No, for sure. And now we're hitting the wind at, a, at kind of a different direction here too. I try to think of other situations uh, which could affect this. One of them would be uh, if you're driving in the mountains, if you're going downhill with this kind of crosswind, you'd have to almost exclusively use the trailer brake only just to, uh, to maintain control. Yep, because I have the trailer brake applied right now. I'm applying it. I'm, I don't have it all on. I'm not trying to lock up the brakes, but I'm just trying to create that tension between the truck and the trailer to pull the two apart because I want the truck. Whoa, we're getting quite a bit of sway right there. I can only imagine what people driving by us are thinking. Probably thinking he shouldn't be towing that right now. Or he needs a bigger truck. Or he needs a bigger truck. Yeah, this isn't confidence inspiring at all. Then there's a lot of folks that you may tow something like this across the country and not experience any harsh winds until you get into a city where you experience harsh winds or a road where there's harsh winds. And that's really where you regret, where that regret comes in of, man, I, I probably shouldn't have, have tried to tow that in the way that I did. But I'm doing a lot of, uh, of throttle and a lot of trailer brake to kind of even, even everything out right now because the wind's wanting to really make this trailer move a lot. Going 50 miles an hour. I got cars flying by me right now. Does this trailer have disc brakes or drums? Drum brakes on it, but it's got four of them. Yeah. That was a heavy gust right there. Might also consider the overheating the trailer brakes. They yeah. can fade after a little while. They can, you're and right. You're doing exactly what you're doing. But really, there's no other way to to control it. Look at those leaves. Look how much wind's hitting me right now. And a lot of it has to do with driver experience because not knowing how to deal with the trailer in these conditions means making mistakes simply because you don't know how to deal with these situations when they occur. And I think a lighter trailer in these wind conditions would be worse. Yeah, very possibly. Because this thing, this trailer is very heavy and I'm surprised it doesn't take the side winds a little bit more stable. Yeah, you would think the weight of this trailer would, would partially impact it, but there's a lot to do with balance as well. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that the fact that you can't have an equalizer hitch on it, I think an equalizer hitch with sway control would make a huge difference. All right, so we're going to turn on around and head back here in a second. So, Dad, final thoughts. What do you think about... What do you think about the setup? I guess that's the best way. So you, you haven't had much time to, to check out the paws. You went inside of it once and looked at it. You saw what it's constructed out of. It's lightweight materials, yet it's a very heavy trailer um, from a, a towing confidence perspective. I mean, this thing, it's really only a few feet longer than your, uh, is it the EPRO or your Flagstaff? Would you feel comfortable towing this, you think, with like a three-quarter ton truck? Yeah, I would prefer a three-quarter ton. And even then, just, it. It's, you can tell this thing is built more for rugged off-road use. It's not something that I see myself wanting to have any time. Uh, 
I'm just not into the uh, rugged outdoors type RVing. I want to be comfortable when I'm RVing. Yep, I guess the other way to kind of look at this too is even though it's built for that rugged off off road overlanding type user, um, a lot of heavy duty trucks aren't. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean? When you look at overland vehicles, you don't necessarily associate a dually with an overland vehicle. You associate maybe a, a Ram Power Wagon, which I think would be a great truck to tow this with. Um, you might associate like an AT4 2500 or 3500 GM truck or uh, a Trail Boss, a heavy duty version. I mean, you, you associate certain types of trucks with certain types of applications. And this is not a lightweight trailer. So even though a lot of people are going to give me grief and say, you know, how could you recommend towing something like this with like a dually or like a one ton pickup? Well, the reality is, is getting it to where you're going is probably as important as the place that you plan on taking it. And if you don't feel confident towing this thing where you're going, then you're certainly probably not going to feel confident taking it out in the off road, the, the, you know, the outback, the areas that you might, you, you may have purchased this unit specifically to use for. Um, if we were traveling from here to Dallas or from here to New Mexico and I'm just on regular roads, of course, a dually or a one ton truck or a three quarter ton truck is going to tow this much, I would say effortlessly. Um, I would never tow this trailer with this truck regularly. That would probably be the best way of saying it. But once you get out to those areas, maybe the dunes, you get out to those areas, the beaches, the places that you might want to really have fun with this trailer, with its you know air suspension and the, the capabilities that it has, well, that's really where you're going to start going, man, my truck might be too heavy to take out to these places. It might be too long. It may not be off-road capable enough to take it where this needs to go. So, you know, Shane over at uh, ROA Off-Road, who has a power wagon with the Carly suspension and, and all this really, really cool upgrades that allow it to go to all these really crazy places. Um, that's really the type of truck you'd want to tow this with. Or I could perceive being the typical owner of something like this or somebody who has a, a one ton or a three quarter ton that they've put a lift on, they've put big tires on, they've, they've set it up specifically for mild off-roading that's who I could really see as a buyer for a, an RV like this because um, with this Denali half ton pickup truck, I certainly wouldn't feel confident taking this truck and that trailer combination out on long road trips. What do you think? I think the kind of person that would buy this trailer, first off, I, I agree you wouldn't have this kind of a truck to tow it with. He'd probably have something much more off-road capable, but I think that People that buy those those kind of trailers and setups, they probably are looking more for the challenge of getting there than the actually being there, if that makes any sense. You know, they, they want to see if they can do it. And I used to do some of that in my younger days I'd, where I'd just do something just to see if I could. And I get the feeling that if you're going to own uh, an off-road RV like this, you're probably going to have a truck that you want to know, can it do it? Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Hence, people who buy power wagons or hence people who buy, you know, an F-250 and then they put a lift kit on it with big tires, a winch and the big bumpers. They, you essentially want an overland truck to match your overland RV. And I guess my best recommendation would be, if you're gonna do that, make sure you have a heavy enough, capable enough and strong enough truck to be able to handle this trailer and its weight getting you to where you're going, including highway driving as well as off-road driving, right? Yeah. Anyways, we are gonna turn around, take this thing back uh, very carefully. Um, we're gonna get some of the footage off of the GoPro that I mounted to the roof as well, and I'll probably overlay it throughout this video, so you've probably been watching a little bit of both. Um, guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel because the next towing we're going to do with this trailer is going to uh, be with the dually and uh, my F450. So I suspect it's going to be an entirely different towing experience, but we'll see. Guys, we'll talk to you again real soon.